What's going on, party boys and girls? Things are good. What's up, guys? How are we all? Good. Doing well. Good. Shit. Robbie, we're starting to turn the screw, my friend. What's that? So we're starting to turn the screw. How long do we get us closer? Yeah, yeah. No, things are moving now, Bill. Yeah, exactly. Um, pretty thankful for that. Just finished up being wicked sick for the last week. Um, I did want to just ask a, just actually a quick question about offer pricing. I don't know if that's um, in. So right now I, I'm on a pretty, a pretty new offer, right? It's, it's a, it's a $3,500 affiliate marketing offer. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, payment plans, yeah, should the price of that offer, if they come in on a three pay or something like that, be in the neighborhood of 5k? Um, it's hard to it's hard to bring a payment plan from that all the way up. I can because I produce the results, and I have and consistently do. Um, not every business owner can be able to put that amount of premium on. I do because I have a large team and I have large people that I have to invest in. So it all depends. To be quite honest, there's not a right and wrong answer. Um, what you want to be doing is you want to be making your paid in full very appealing to people. You know what I mean? And it's just easier. It's just easier for the person. It just, you know, helps them, you know, invest less. Um, I price things in a way where I actually go out of my way to help people, you know, uh, in a way of like putting X amount down and I can give you 30 days, 40 days to come around with the rest of it, um, which which gives people 40 days of training development without thinking that you know they have to spend more and invest more so it all depends it all depends it's not a right and wrong answer to be quite honest with you but there is a jump for affiliate marketing um which there's probably not a tremendous amount of hand on hand and hand on hand and hand on hand which is a lot of this button does this and this button does that and this copy does this and that copy does that there's not a lot of like development and coaching of 15 hours a week you know what i mean so it's very hard to be able to justify that much of a jump is my opinion okay what okay. they're allowing to do is they're allowing people to come in with a thousand bucks and commission split the rest right so um i, I just i thought get the amount of cash collected Meaning like once you make money i make money kind of a thing yeah exactly all right interesting Shit. Sure. That would mean that you have to heavily rely on the people that you're bringing in to actually be able to do the work. You know what I mean? Which, which isn't as scale and as you grow business, you're just not going to be able to be facilitated at that level because you can't rely on people. You know what I mean? There's a great saying: I can bring a dog, so I could bring the uh, horse to water, but I can't make him do what? Drink. So it's hard. It's hard to just say yes or no, and it's someone else's business. I can't. You know, tell you guys what to do. Nor do, nor would I want to anyway. You know. All right, all right, Alec, let's go with you, buddy, and then we will go to Robbie, then Francine, Michelle, Jean, and then come back up to Andreas. Okay. Um. So I've been like a weekend officially now, just attending calls and whatnot, and I feel so. I'm. I've watched most of the Facebook trainings. Uh, I feel right now though that I don't want to say overwhelmed, but it's kind of like okay, how do I go from what I was doing in the past and like not totally jump ship to, you know, this, this style of doing calls and whatnot without yeah. getting, I guess, like a slow gradual, right? Cause I'm watching objections. I'm watching, uh, you know, future pacing in action, like North star, all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah. What did I say to you? The minute we sat down, what did I say to you? I said to you two things, buddy. I said two things to you. And this is for all of you guys, two things. I said, number one, when you come in, you're going to see a lot of people winning and you're going to see testimonials day after day after day after day. And there's, they're actually slowing down because they're just not posting. But I know they're winning because they private message me. Second thing I'm going to say to you is tunnel vision to where you need to be at the very fucking start. OK, the problem that you have now is you're trying to change four things all at once. And what's going to happen is you're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to fuck yourself and you're going to absolutely suck. Like I said to you, buddy, focus on the biggest issue that you have right now, which is your objections. Get really, really good at the objections for the first 30, 45 days, and then you can build out from there. Because once you get the understanding of how the end of the call happens, then you can go and fix the top of the call. That's a problem I see time and time again. And this is what I said to you. I said two things, tunnel vision and just focus on one thing at one time, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. What did you do? You said, fuck you, Bill. You know absolutely nothing about this. There's no way that you've coached all these <laughs> And there's no way that you know exactly what you're saying. And I'm just going to do it the way that I want to do it. And I'm, and watch what happens. And this is what happens. 
So politely, politely, yeah, just focus on one or two things. That's it. Okay. Okay. Because what happens, what happens is and it's not just you. The reason why I said it to you is because I see it day in, day out. What happens is you'll go through one one video in objection handling, you go through one video of future pace, you come all the way back to North Star and do one video there, and then you'll come all the way back to consequence and do one video there, and you're getting like 10% of everything. And then you're trying to put 10% of everything together and you're just trying to get 100%. And what happens? You don't know how to deliver it. You don't know how to say it. You don't know what you're trying to get out of it. And before you know it, then you're all over the place. You put yourself in a crossroads where you are today, which is like, I don't know whether I go left or I don't know whether I go right. What I said to you at the start is just slowly implement things better. Slowly just improve on what you're currently doing. Because once you get that better, then you're going to go from 30% up to 42%. And then from 42%, you can go to 68%. Do you know what I mean? But slowly build it up. That's what they do. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you definitely you definitely said it when I came in, and I no, because I have a recorded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I see it all the time, and I understand why you do, buddy, because everybody wants the results yesterday. But I like I also understand the best practice to actually get the result yesterday. It's not changing everything all at once. If you imagine, right, you're trying to build a house. Yeah. You're trying to pull out the house by also putting in the new parts at the exact same time. You're trying to fucking build a wall and put a roof on at the exact same time. You're trying to dig up the foundations and actually set the fucking concrete at the exact same time. It just doesn't work, but there's a process that has to go in place. You know what I mean? There's a fucking set standard that has to be in place to be able to help you move forward. You know, it just doesn't work. And you end up fucking yourself like you are today. Not necessarily fucking yourself, but like just trying to do everything all at once. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So All right. go back to the drawing board and just slow down a little bit. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes slowing down makes means you speed up anyway in the long term. Yeah. yeah. One All step right. back, two steps forward. Correct. All right. Robbie, what's going on with you, party boy? Ah, uh, party boys, girls. There we go. Can you hear me? Yep, you're talking to me, Bill. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, buddy, yeah. What's going on? Volume cut out. No, I just wanted to, there's a couple of things I wanted to ask. I wanted to just chat about the offer pricing real quick. Um, I need to get my cash collected up, my deal size up, right? So yep. right now, as I mentioned at the beginning, we've got a $3,500 or $3,500 offer. Um, they can come in and do a commission split and bring the total value of the deal up to four up, up to four grand. It it seems a little strange. I need to come up with a, an incentive to get people to piff, right? And so that's what I wanted to talk to you about was, you know, do we do we push do we push the price of this thing up to 5k with with a comm split in there or what's the right what's the right approach to this? I never heard a comm split to be quite honest with you. It's quite unusual. Um, yeah, it's it's on it strikes me as unusual as well. Yeah. Um, but that's that's what they do. Um, so they'll go 50 50 on comms until yeah. uh, you know the, the total value of the deal of 4k has so. been reached. Yeah, it's good. I like it because it ultimately means you got a you you have no questions about your own ability, and it means that you know that what you're doing is what works if someone just plugs and play. Problem that you have is not everyone can plug and play. So that's an issue that will come up as you grow and develop a business past probably six figures a month. Mm -hmm. So that's an issue, but it's not your issue. <laughs> your issue is how do you get more cash in front? Yeah. So it's very, very simple. Like how are you currently doing it right now? Like what's the entire total of the business or the contract is 3,500 or something? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So you're taking a thousand bucks at the front. I'm taking a thousand bucks in the front end. Yeah. Why don't you incentivize it like I do? And you could do it instead of doing it on a cash collected, you could do it in a, in a position of like what, how long does it take for them to start turning this into something of value where they know 60 to 90 days is the turnaround time before the first comms come in. 60. Yeah. There's a lot of education, knowledge, and experience given away in the first 60 days that would, you know, ultimately be required. You know, so I think 60 days is a long time to wait. It's two months, buddy. I mean, it's a lot of knowledge to give away for a thousand bucks. 
-hmm. What they're doing is they're doing done for you content that gets spoon fed to them every day. So yeah. they get a, 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 an email workflow every day, six days a week. Yeah. Uh, then they're assembling all this stuff, posting it where it needs to go. And that's yeah. how, how the business comes in. Yeah. What I would say is like, instead of having a thousand down, I would have 1500 down. Instead of having a 35 and a paid in full, I would have a 4500 in the payment structure. But if you pay it all off or invest, make the whole investment within the tar first 30 to 40 days, I can keep the value at 35. You know what I mean? Like these are incentives that you would have that would ultimately be driving people to, you know, pay in full a little bit faster. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta frame it in a way that they have to, you know, the need, want, and desire. And, you know, I suppose the wanting to do it has to be there for them. You know, there has to be something in it for them that ultimately is going to want them to do it, you know? Yeah. To, to, to me, it's like, I would like to work with 2K on the front end as yeah. a, you know, your down payment, if we're going to commission split the rest and then take the total price, if we're going to split comms up to five grand, leave the $3,500 PIF as it is. Yeah. I don't know. You also want to like, it, it depends on like how you frame the first part down. If someone's like, if you say to someone, okay, like what, what do you have available that would help you move forward today so you can actually go and get X, Y, and Z? Now, if they say to you, I have a thousand bucks, what I would say is this you always want to put on another piece on for them. So they say, I have a thousand bucks. And then I would turn around and say, could you do 1500 or 2K? Now, what have I done? I've just, I've just increased the value of this, but by 100% or 50%. Yeah. Yeah. So what are they going to say? They're either going to say one of three things. They can do a thousand, fifteen, or they don't have anything to do and they need only a thousand. So if you keep asking those types of questions, you're going to double it up straight away. That's what I would do. You know what I mean? Because they've they've accepted that they're going to make an investment. You know, the thousand bucks is the lowest that they're ever going to get. So anything above that is a bonus. Yeah. So I would just go, so like, would it be fair if like you have potentially 2K or even 1500? You're either going to say yes, no, or a thousand. You know what I mean? If you do that on every 10 calls, I know you're going to get at least three to five that are going yeah. to do 1500 or 2000. And then what we can do then, Robbie, on the back end is we can split pay the last 1500 bucks. Is that fair enough that we can keep it at 3500 instead of it going up to 5K over the next 45 days? What are you going to say to them? It's a good deal. It is a good deal because I've saved you 1500 bucks and I actually, you know, put you in a position where what, the level that you're at, I've made it accessible for you to obviously move forward and go and actually achieve this. And I've actually saved you 1500 bucks in the long run as well. You know I mean? So I mean, really the whole thing is, is if I want to collect more cash, I mean, the rule is I need to, I need to ask for it. You know, it's just that simple, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Wrap, wrap it all up. This last seven minutes of coaching, yes, ask for more money. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, you got to ask it in a way that ultimately you frame it right, though. You know what I mean? And I, I brought yeah. it into a binary option, like you can do 2,000 or 1,500. What I've just done is I've increased it by 100% or 50%. Yeah. And then it's either going to go one of three ways. It's going to go 2,000, 15, or it goes back to 1,000. Mm -hmm. at, like, at least then I've asked. You do that for every 10 people, you'll get three to five people that will go more than what they said. Because if you have a thousand, you're fifteen hundred. I guarantee you that. If you have fifteen hundred, you have two and a half. Everybody has. You know, you're not going like if you have a thousand bucks in your bank account, you're not going to say to somebody, "You can have all my money, everything I actually have." No one in this in this room would do that. I imagine. You know what I mean? So they they ultimately will give you twenty to about thirty percent of what they actually have available. More often than not, right. it's how people make investments. That's why people only ever put down twenty to thirty percent for properties. Everyone potentially has the full investment, dropping multiple six figures on it, but they don't. Why? Because they want to leverage. No, well, interest payments are tax free too. So, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, just one other real quick question, Bill, and I, I think I know the, the the answer to this, but I'm getting these guys that are showing up on calls, stacking all kinds of biz op stuff. They're working the nine to five. They're doing, yeah. am you know, Amazon stuff or whatever. They come and they talk to me. They wonder if they can fit this in there. To me. I think I, I need to ask them about their numbers, right? Like just when they're trying to just, they're telling me like, I'm not sure if I have the time to fit this in my, my, my weekday. Do I need to just draw a numerical value from where they want to go to where they are? 
and and put a dollar value on that on that indecision for them find what we you know have in the time. Well, no one has time, Ravi. Like, and that's one thing I want you to know, buddy. Nobody has time. Watch this. Nobody has time. That's why we only have 24 hours in a day. I don't know anybody that has more than 24 hours. Do you? Well, it's been on that exact phrase has been on my mind as well. It's just a matter of okay, how do I how do I get that point across and make it land, right? Mm -hmm. Um you've gotta you gotta make it land, but you gotta make what they say redundant. So what I would do first waves is just call it black and white, but you only have 24 hours today. The most important thing that you have to figure out is what's going to move the needle for you the quickest and the fastest. Do you feel that what we presented to you can actually get you to where you want to go? Once they say yes, now the objection more or less fucking disintegrates. Because why would you want to be doing stuff that's only going to give you 5% of the time when you can do something that can give you 20 to 35% of the time? It just won't work. So you just got to make it valuable and you got to make it prioritized more than anything else that they're doing. Okay. So and just come back to the ROI, basically. Yeah, but you would also come back to a situation of, uh, can I just ask you in terms of everything that you're doing, how long have you been doing all those evidence? And they're going to say, I don't know, 6 to 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and in that time, do you feel that the return that you wanted was actually achieved? No, that's why I'm here. Well, then if you continue to do the same thing over and over and over again, as the great expression is, the like to continue to do the same thing over and over again as the definition of insanity, I can't imagine you want to be insane moving forward. You? No, okay, well then... So now I'm moving there. So all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push away from something into something else. But what you want to do though, Robbie, and this is something that will come up, is you want to be able to help them break the fucking mindset of keep chopping and changing. Because that's what probably is going on. They're not putting enough time, effort, and commitment into doing one thing. And just it's it's like, I have to finish this out or else I'm going to die. That's why they're chopping and changing all these money-making schemes. So you got to get over that objection first as well. Because that's going to be the fear, the scarcity in the back of their mind. Is this going to go like everything else? And is everything else going to go like everything else? You know what I mean? So that's a big thing. Yeah. Okay. Shades of fear in there too. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, it will be. Francine, what's going on with you, sister? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am a okay. Good. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the uncertainty stuff, because if I don't have to change every ting, as you say, we should not, I do not want to, and my objection handling didn't suck, yeah. so I'm just kind of tweaking things that I feel I need to. So yeah. my first thing is around this whole uncertainty thing. Well, I totally understand we're selling, you know, the commitment responsibility. Yeah. I guess I, I hear things on the calls and I'm like, well, is that not uncertainty? Or like if I role play, like people will say, oh, well, that's uncertainty. So I'm totally confused. So I want to come to the source. So I guess my first question would be um, when I'm asking that question about, you know, do you feel that this can't, right? I never used to let anybody go unless they were completely drooling. So I absolutely understand that, okay? If they were not drooling though, yeah. I would address it. And then my question would be, well, you know, why wouldn't this work for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. I've heard you do it where ask them why it would first, but then I've also heard you do the, well, why wouldn't it? And then go into the, with all these things, da, 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 can you honestly say it wouldn't? Yeah. How, is there a right or wrong way or doesn't it really matter? Uh, what I like to do and I have that when someone comes to me and says, oh, I'm not really sure or I don't know. And then I would say, OK, like, what is it that you don't know? And then before they answer it, because I don't actually want them to answer, I'm just going to go straight after them. Because when they answer it, what they're trying to do is they're trying to confirm and actually validate why they have fear, uncertainty and, and hesitation. I don't want to hear the bullshit. I'm just going to go straight back and I'm just going to list everything else out. Can you just explain to me, Francine? you know, how you feel you're going to be one out of thousands of people that can't get the result based on X, Y, Z. Like, what is it in that that you feel isn't going to actually put you in a position where you can deal one, two, three? Now they're going to have, now they're going to crumble. They're just going to disintegrate and their objections, their fears. So like, is there something else going on here? Because look, it, let's be quite fair and honest. Like if you do all of this stuff, you will get to where you want to go. Correct? What are they going to say? They're going to say correct. And they, they won't they won't go correct, they'll be like, yeah, fair enough. So like 
that question that you have comes from somewhere else. Can you just explain to me where it's coming from? Is it a little bit of uncertainty potentially in yourself or in the investment? Or like, can you just help me see how it can help you? Because that, like, the, more often than not, um, they won't, like, if you explain it in a way that ultimately is getting you from point A to point B in the shortest amount of time, everyone believes that they can get there. You know what I mean? So the uncertainty actually more often than not, 99.9% isn't actually in myself or in what I do, because they wouldn't be here unless they actually believe in what we've done. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's more of an uncertainty of, do they have the funds? Are they fearful in themselves? Is there a partner objection? Is there a time constraint? Is there a fear in myself? You know, those are the yeah. kind of questions that I want to figure out. Okay. I mean, the interesting thing is when I used to ask that question, nine out of 10 times, I couldn't come up with a reason why. Yeah, it's because it's all because it was bullshit, yeah. and so that was my way of calling out the bullshit. Yeah, well, I was, that, you know, but I like you, your way. If you do it that way, and if you have an egotistical person, they'll just spit you a load of shit, and then they'll stand in their shit because they won't allow their ego to be damaged enough. So if if you ask a person, well, just tell me why you can't lose weight on all of this stuff. You know, and they're just going to tell you all the stuff about being big boned, or they're going to tell you all of the stuff about like carbs double up in your body, all this bullshit. And they're just going to stay in their bullshit, even though they know it's bullshit. Why? Because their ego won't allow them to come to terms that they're wrong. So yeah. it's, I, I saw that myself because I have a very strong yeah. personality. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to clash with people. I would be like, well, just tell me why it don't work. You like, you tell me like how you're the, you are the oracle who it's not going to work for. And then they start telling me all the shit. And I'm like, and then I'd be like, that's bullshit, isn't it? So I'm like very direct when I objection handle at that level. Yeah. And then what we used to happen is I used to just bash. So I just yeah. shifted it back to into that kind of not curious, but like a little bit like, oh, like why are you fat? You're like, well, yeah. obviously, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like dumbfounded. Can you just yeah. think of why all of these things that you feel like has worked for everyone else, but it's not going to necessarily work for you? Yeah. You know what I mean? I go that way, but I know. Yeah, I used to play the dumb detective kind of thing, like, yeah. you know, asking the question. Okay. So then, with that said, that totally makes sense. In our objection handling for the partner, when yeah. we ask about the, the, you know, would your partner want you to learn the skills, blah, 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 there's an optional question there that says, well, why would she after all these years of trying? Mm. Is that not breeding uncertainty? It is. In it is. It depends on the answers that they give you. Like if someone comes and says to you, like, this is the fifth time that I've tried to fucking build a Facebook group mm -hmm. and I've invested in the past. Mm -hmm. And someone comes in and says, I just got to run it past my partner because, you know, we make decisions together. And the last couple of times that I've invested, I haven't actually spoken to her about it. And it kind of ended up in a position that I failed. Do you know what I mean? That's when that type of an objection will come out, which is more of a fear of myself rather than a fear of what you do, which is more of a fear of can I actually provide the value needed to get to where I want to go? Have I had the accountability? Have I had the high level of coaching? Have, have I had um, the structure to actually go and achieve this? So they're all different types, as you know. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And then just one last one. Um, okay. I've heard you when you do when you do the future pace, yeah. you, um, if you're like someone yeah, wants to go from like, you know, making 5k a month to 20k a month, I've heard you bring in when you're asking, I understand you're talking slow and all that stuff. And you're bringing in that, you know, when we get you to that, you know, 240,000 a year, yeah. every year, right? Like all that stuff. And then you, you say something like that, that's a lot of money. Right? How is that not breeding uncertainty in their brains like oh yeah it is a lot of money what if I can't do it um what it is for me it's it's more about maximizing the outcome and what I would say be like it's more of a like creating a gap when someone would say to me like I want to go from 5k up to like 35k mm -hmm. what I want to do is I want to stretch out the goal that's it's not necessarily creating uncertainty because I can handle what's going to come out of it and the okay. question you're asking is the uncertainty of, oh my God, can I actually go and do this? So how I would frame that in a way is like 5K up, up to 35K. Look, Francine, that's a lot of money. When I get you to that exact point, like that's ultimately going to change your life, isn't it? That's like 35,000 every single month. And that's a chunk. 
you know, that's a six to seven percent or six to seven X. It's really 10 X, my friend. That's a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. Different so concept. The, the, yeah. The, the question that you asked was if, if I say that and I do it in a questionable way, that's ultimately, as you say, can I actually go and achieve this? Was the headspace that you were coming about? That's not what I want. So I want to, like, that's that's a big goal. Like, what are you going to yeah. do with that amount of money? Like, that will yeah. also change you and your family's life. Like, what does that look like? Because that's the goal, isn't it? That's the key. That's where we want to go. Okay. See, it's different. Totally makes it's good sense. Ask. It's good that you ask because it can be taken out of context. It can, it can be moved around. Yeah, know? yeah. Perfecto. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, Jean, go for it, sister. What's going on with you, party girl? You uh, back in routine? I'm I'm here. How are you? Oh, I'm here too. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling this weekend, but that's okay. Um, okay, I have two questions. Cool. First, I finally have a stinking call since I think the first time in November. So clearly off my game. I want to get from you. Like, what is the number one thing I should focus on? Yeah. What is the number one thing I should focus on? And yeah. They're welcome and can you help them? Like well, you, I don't actually, huh? Here's the thing, right? This is what sales is. Sales is the ultimate conviction that you know that you can help that person. If you don't believe, know, like, and trust that yourself, then like it's a waste of time. It's all a facade. It's all a fagazzi. Anyone, any uh, Francine, what do you say? What do you what do you Italians say? Fagazzi. Is that what it is? I don't know that word, no. Well, it's all like Maybelline, fairy dust. It's all. Oh. You ever see that out of the gangster films where they're like, it's all a fagazzi. It's all <laughs> made up. No? No? Am I the only one that watches gangster films? <laughs> yeah, apparently. So basically. You get what, what he's they, saying, though, Gene. <laughs> what, I, what I mean by all that is like, if you truly don't believe we're from, and I mean politely in the salts of your in, intestines, um, then it doesn't matter. Like you have to truly believe that the questions that you ask and the way the person is, like you know that you can actually help that person and you can genuinely say, if they gave me a dollar, yeah, I'm going to help that person. You know, whether if they gave me a hundred thousand dollars, it doesn't really matter. You know, so that's the first thing. You've got to have conviction knowing that you can actually help that person. Where's Michelle gone? She's gone. I have to bounce, got another sales called the jump on. Oh shit, I never answered. So that's the first thing I will figure out. Yeah. Okay. So first thing you got to figure out, can I actually truly help this person? I got to believe it myself first, because if I don't believe it, she's not going to believe it from me. So that's the first thing you have. That's sales 101. Second, second thing that you have to figure out and you got to actually come across as is you come across as the authority, meaning it's your dance and you can speed up the dance or you can slow the dance down depending on what you want to see or how you want it to go. What I mean by that is you dictate the pace, you dictate the tonality, you dictate what's going on, and you dictate ultimately what's been said and what's going on. You know, so that's the second thing you need to figure out. If you can do those two things, then you're on the right track. Okay. So when someone starts to ramble, and I know they ramble on your calls because they're in a tremendous amount of pain, you got to just pull them back a little bit and be like, yeah, we can definitely go through all that. And we can definitely, you know, if we have time at the end of the call, break all that stuff down. Guess to the end of the call, they don't even know what they said 44 minutes ago. I guarantee you that. So don't worry about in your head, going back to all this stuff. Just kind of stay into your process. Just figure out what you need to get out of each four parts. And then from there, then just don't fucking shit the bed when you go and ask for money. Go and ask him. It's just a transition. It's just this is what we're doing. This is how we're working because you know, as well as I do, when you're dealing with the people that you and I deal with, it's a tremendous amount of uncertainty. They want certainty at the end of the conversation. So you transition it in like it's just a natural fucking ball goes into the hole. That's all it is. You're putting the ball into the hole. Got it. Enjoy it as well. Okay. So this person, I actually know nothing about her. I've never talked to her. She booked off to off of Instagram and she put in her like call form that she's a nutritionist and she can't figure it out. So of course I'm already going into it. Like, oh, great. She's going to challenge my authority. Cause you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But that's probably what I needed to hear since that's all I know about her is that she has nutrition information. Um, I, I have sales trainers that want to come and get trained by me and then go away and trying to repurpose the shit that I give them. Yeah. 
So like, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it, it all comes back to the weather. Mm -hmm. you know? Be privileged to know that a nutritionist has seen so much value in what you bring to the table that she's actually going to give you an hour of her time and actually want to have a conversation and, and figure out, can you actually help her further? So use it as a compliment. Good like, I like it. Okay. When salespeople come to me and sales trainer, we're like, hey, well, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? I'm like, hold on a second. Shouldn't you know this yourself, you fucking fucking asshole? And they're like, no, of course I don't. That's why I'm asking you. So cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Take it as okay. a compliment because it is a compliment. Yeah. Okay. That's compliment. Got it. Um, can I ask a second quick one? Yeah, I thought that was a second one, but I'm going to go for it. No, no, no. So I was role playing with Danielle this morning. Um, she was giving me all the objections and she's like, okay. I have talked to my husband, see what he thinks and it, it, whether or not we have the money. And I'm just a little uncertain of whether it'll work. Right. Um, and so I didn't know how to handle that when there's so much uncertainty and I'll, and I get club them together. Right. But I didn't know, like, because there's so many elements, whether or not the money is there and he wants to spend it in which it'll work, like oh. how to approach that. So basically what has happened is you've got like 15 objections all at once. You just asked for the sale and someone just started out everything and anything. Right. Just kept talking. Basically, is what happened, yeah? Right. So what has that told you? Everything that the person says is just complete lies. Right. Yeah. So, like, in terms of, like, going speaking to your partner and, you know, looking at the finances and coming back, I mean, I know you said you've got some time issues that may be a concern. We could definitely go through all that. In the meantime, though, and just so we're very clear on this, do you feel that what we have presented today and what I've given you can actually get you to where you want to go? Yes. Okay, so in terms of all of those kind of concerns and problems that you may have had, like, now I'm going to bring them back. Yeah. So the most important, like, here's the, here's the thing, right? When you handle objections, which ones are the most important ones? I mean, for me, it's, it's I think, fear. Mm. Okay. But they hide it under the rest. Okay, well then just take it all away. So take the fear out of it. Take the fear out of it and the rest of them will disintegrate. So you would be like this. So I know you have to go do A, B, and C and all that stuff. And I know that you're probably a little bit uncertain of things. Would that be fair to say? Must the person would say. Mm -hmm. Now, to, like, you, if you weren't here and you weren't uncertain, then it wouldn't actually be important for you. The biggest thing that I have to do is I have to pour into you so you actually go and achieve X, Y, and Z. And now I'm going to go through my fear analogy. And then I'm going to come back around and I'm going to go through all the rest of the stuff too. Sometimes you won't need to. Bring yeah. it back to your watch. So in terms of obviously you, where you are today, like what feel, what do you feel needs to change so you actually can go and achieve A, B, and C? And I know it's not necessarily going to speak with your pattern. And I know it's not necessarily going and obviously figuring out that you have a million point five in the bank account. You know, and we can definitely work on all of those logistics and all of those concerns and all of those things. I will work with you. What is the biggest thing that you need to do right here, right now, so you can actually put a line in the sand and go and achieve this for you and your family and actually go and live the life you want to live? And what are they going to say? Well, I need to make a change. Mm -hmm. You can definitely make a change. You can definitely put a line in the sand. In terms of the investment, don't worry about all the investments. All I want you to do right here is build up the courage to actually say what? Yes. And I challenge you enough to do that. That's how I would club them all together and I would take them all away when I would go after what I'm currently seeing. Yeah. Cool. Makes sense. Easy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Andres, what's going on with you, party boy? Other than trying to buy a Ferrari? what's going on man no it's been good i've been going through training since friday um i felt curious to go through all of it but then i was like let me just focus on the think about it because that was you know the main objection that i kept hearing and um then the next day i had uh two calls on saturday and yeah I, like i said i closed two of them and they both gave me the think about it objection so it was it was pretty cool and uh mm. I, I got a deposit from the first from the first call I had. So I felt really good because I used the, yeah, that's no problem. Could I ask in your opinion before you go think about it? Why do you feel, or do you feel that this can get you to, you know, X, Y, Z goal? And then I committed him and then I got like a $500 deposit. And the next call, it was this German guy with his father. 
And it was hilarious because I could tell they were German because I, I can speak fluent German. But normally I would like chit chat if I would have noticed that. But mm -hmm. I remember you saying in some of the training, just, you know, cut out all the fluff. So I just kind of jumped straight into the call. But you'll love this. He, when he gave me the think about it objection, I asked him, could I ask in or could I ask in your opinion in English? And then he said, yes. And then I said in German, why do you feel like it can but mm -hmm. I replied that in German and the dad started laughing. He's like, oh, you can speak German. And then, I don't know, I feel like we built a good connection there. And, and then they ended up doing a payment plan. So, yeah, that that works like a fucking charm, bro. Like, it's <laughs> so good. It's so it's, good. Yeah, it's the biggest objection in the market and it's the biggest smoke screen. And believe it or not, it's actually not the biggest objection because it's not even an objection. And it's as funny as it is. And everyone wants to bash it and blah, 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 and give you 55 different ways to overcome it. You just need one. It's all you need. You just need mine, and then you just need to run it, and you just need to perfect it. Once you perfect it, you'll never get it again. Because it'll just split, as I always say to you guys. It'll split in different components, whether it's fear, money, or logistics. That's how it works. That's all it is. Fear, money, or logistics. Yeah. Once you understand that, everything else becomes very, very easy. And it was really money because afterwards we've been talking on WhatsApp and, you know, he just said it was just the money and he just needed, he was, he was just stalling because of that. So yeah, man, no, it's, it's, it's really good. And then one question I had for you is, Go should ahead. I just double down on just all the different objections before I go into the other material that you have inside of the uh, I would definitely prioritize your objections if that's where you feel your weakest at the moment. Um, because that's where most people lose money is their objections what I like to do and what I've always advocated was objections consequence future pace north star if you do it that way then it just becomes very easy because you know what you need to get out of this place to get that place that place to get that place so instead of going up the hill you're going down the hill you know what I mean mm -hmm. now how, where, where, how, where do you run faster do you run faster going up a hill or down a hill down a hill Think about how you are, how you should learn. You should learn going backwards, in my opinion. So if you go to the end and then build out from there, you're going to speed it up far quicker than you go from the top all the way up or from the bottom all the way up. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. That's a good analogy again, aren't they? What do you think of that one, Gene? How do you run faster? Do you run faster going down a hill or up a hill? There's another one. All right. Perfect. Easy. Yeah. Anyone, anyone else? A anyone, anyone else? Anyone, any other questions? We've got three Just minutes. One super quick question, Bill. I'm no. wondering, do you, uh, uh, sometimes I buy and sell vacant land and I, I enter into price negotiations and different things like that. And I'm thinking about what we've learned here and how to adapt that to the negotiation process. And I'm just wondering if you have any closing thoughts on 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 where sales meets negotiation and if there's anything I should glean from, from that. <clears throat> Good question. Sales is negotiations. That's all it is. Um, ultimately, you're talking about buying it or selling it? Because there are two different things. Well, and two different but yeah. let, let, let's talk about buying it. Yeah, well, buying it. So the person is obviously trying to offload it to do what? Well. It varies. Money. I mean, a lot of the time it's just vacant land. Sometimes they don't even know they own it. Sometimes it's true to get rid of a tax burden, you know, but a lot of the times I don't know, right? Yeah. Sometimes I'm, I'm calling them, sending them a letter saying, I want to buy your piece of property. Yeah. Would, it's not, kind of, I want to buy your piece of property. It's the question should be, would you be open to exploring the opportunity for me to buy your property? You know what I mean, because at the end of the day, someone comes to me and says, I want to buy your house. You're like, hold on a second, buddy. I'm not even selling it. So what I want to do is I want to plant the seed in their head that they would even be open to doing it anyway. Now, what I would be doing if I was you, I would be given context of this is what I do, this is how I do it, and this is the kind of uh, investment that I'm willing to invest in terms of a property of the same size that you are. Now, in my head, straight away, it was like, okay, I have this piece of land that I actually don't use anything for, and it's potentially worth 500K. Now it's the fucking the ding, 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 ding is going, okay, well, let's do this. I got 500K for something that I don't even use. So it's kind of more like the questions that you ask at the front will open it up far better than just, you know, dropping statements at people, in my opinion. Yeah. How you sell it then is you sell it on the basis of obviously what they need the land for. 
do you know and it's the same thing with the selling if someone comes to you independently and says i want to like would you be open to buying my property i would be figuring out why do you want to sell it first they could be like well my wife or my daughter is getting married and i need 50k to pay for her wedding now i know there's a time constraint yeah i mean you know what i mean or it could be that I have a fucking tax bill that needs to be paid on January 1st. Well, now I know there's another time constraint. And now I can use the time as an anchor to obviously push the deal through. You know what I mean? So without you figuring out why they want to sell it, or even if they want to sell it, then you're never going to be able to make it effective. Yeah. Okay. So on the front end, basically, I'm just going to use, I'm going to, I'm going to present it looking for the willingness to... Yeah. sell that piece of land, explain a little bit of process to them. You know, generally I can close within 30 days. I can pay the closing costs or whatever, and blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. Would you, would you be open, open to that? And just let them kind of fill in a little in bit of blanks on, on their yeah. own as to what that can do for them instead of being super overt and black and white about it. Sometimes if you go too fast, too soon into anything, it just doesn't go well. I mean, if you buy a girl a drink at the bar next minute, you try and kiss her within like four minutes, it's probably going to end up with a slap in the mouth. Yeah. This is the exact same. You know, you've got to warm people up, unfortunately. So it's, it's been a long time since I've been buying girls drinks in bars. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> Me too, but in the way. All right, Robert, ladies. Just really quick. Oh, I just want to tell Robert, I did that for eight years before the market went kaput. If you want to reach out to me um, on Facebook, you know, just yeah. message me. I'm happy to share with you some of the things I did because it worked really well for me. Yeah, I I'd love to, Francine. Yeah, thanks so much for that. I'll, sure, I'll do my Francine. In terms of what I just said, would that would that make sense? Or like, have I just talked completely? Oh, yeah, totally. Because everybody is like, I want to buy your ground. I have builders who want to buy your ground. I have this, I have that, right? But yeah. like, until you like, you know, can really get to the whole truth of everything emotionally, even with ground, it was like Bill said, like, why? Like, what? why do it now? You know, it was really the same process, which I think is probably why this kind of like I fell into this after the market went boom, because it kind of did, you know, have the same. Sort of yeah, fear. Th thanks, Francine. Yeah, I'd love to just have a short a short call with you sometime. Yeah, and, for and sure. Chat. Yeah, that'd Happy be great. To. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Bye bye. Hey, Miss bye. you all already. My heart thanks is bleeding. Good luck. See you later. Bye. Thanks, Bill.